ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be discussing two tech news stories which have popped up over the past 24 or so hours. The first of which is IBM, an announcement for 5NM nano sheet chip technology. So now we are able to pack 30 billion, I'm just going to repeat that one more time, 30 billion transistors into a chip which is about the size of a fingernail. And the second is further confirmation and roadmaps concerning Intel and their Coffee Lake range of processors. Because it looks like we will be getting certain Coffee Lake CPUs this year after all, but not all of them. So we're going to be discussing that in this very video. My name's Paul, and well, let's begin, shall we? So, first things first. IBM have announced a partnership with Samsung and Global Foundries, and this partnership isn't 100% new or anything, but it is a very important what they're doing. I'm going to read out an excerpt of a quote, because quite frankly, it's kind of lengthy, if we were to delve into the full thing. For business and society to meet the demands of cognitive and cloud computing in the coming years, advancement in semiconductor technology is essential. That's why IBM aggressively pursues new and different architectures and materials that push the limits of this industry and brings them to market in technologies like mainframes and our cognitive systems. And this is all thanks to an entirely new technology by the name of GAFET. I think that's how you pronounce it anyway, G-A-A-F-E-T. Now, unfortunately, there's not a massive amount of information that has been made publicly with the press announcement, but from what I've managed to piece together, it looks like a departure from ThinFET. Instead, we'll have almost a, I guess, a mixture of ThinFET and 2D. So, in a nutshell, we have this situation where IBM stacks layers of silicon and layers of silicon germanium on top of one another, and then the what happens then is the space is filled with a high-K gate material. Now, what this actually does because let's face it, that's probably more important to many of you rather than the actual nitty-gritty of it. Well, it's very impressive. In comparison to a 10NM commercial chip, IBM and Samsung are promising us up to 40% improvements in performance or, alternatively, 75% power consumption reduction while maintaining similar levels of performance. That's absolutely huge in you know, if this is something that's actually achievable and manageable in real life. Now, I concur with many folks when I say that, you know, many of you when you say that, hey, you know, reductions in size are no longer really as important for CPUs as what they once were. You know, back in the days of, let's say, the Pentium 2s, Pentium 3s, Pentium 4s, and, you know, so on and so on, yeah, the reduction in size was definitely a big deal, but now it's not so much of a big problem, as you can certainly start squeezing a lot of chips, a lot of cores on the same die anyway. But that's not to say that this won't benefit the desktop, it will, but really the crux of this is going to be for other devices. As he said, um, if you're trying to put together huge numbers of CPU cores in, let's say, oh, I don't know, a mainframe, like if you're putting together like the next Xeon chips, for example. It does have other usages, definitely in terms of graphics cards, as we all know that they are always pressed for space. And obviously in terms of mobile, it's also very much a paramount issue because ultimately um, power consumption and mobile are two enemies of one another. Battery technology does help. We've certainly made some advancements some strides in that. But we all know the pain of having a smartphone or a tablet or whatever. And then, you know, five hours later, it's basically crying and begging you to hook it up to the, uh, into the, you know, into the wall because it's pretty much dead. And that sucks. So one of the ways forward behind that is to basically reduce the power consumption of the devices. And it's one of the reasons that um, basically at the moment we have such light software. In other words, the computing... Um, that we're handling on like mobile devices is not really that intensive. It's typically being farmed out, and that's why, um, you know, augmented reality, that type of stuff, isn't really doable on consumer level devices right now. At least, you know, if we want a battery to last more than three seconds, it is doable 
but it's going to basically need to be farmed out and wouldn't be able to be calculated locally on your device is pretty much the crux of the matter. And I am simplifying things, of course, for this particular video. Either way, this is really cool. Um, and obviously, this will definitely impact us for high-end power, con uh, sorry, for high-performance devices as well, because ultimately, if you can reduce the size of chips, if you can reduce the size of silicon, you can put more cores in, more cash, whatever. But it's probably going to take a while to filter down Anyway, so we're just going to have to wait and see uh, where all of this lies. Next, Intel. So, Intel, 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 Intel. Let's be really honest here. I don't think anyone really foresaw Ryzen being as competitive as what it ended up being for Intel. I think most people assumed, at least I did anyway, that Ryzen was going to be a good processor. I had no doubts about that because I think that AMD had been very open and honest with Ryzen. We'd seen a lot of die shots, we'd seen a lot of specs, we'd heard it was going to have at least 40% IPC over their previous generations, and so on and so on and so on. Basically, it just didn't look like it was going to be a really bad chip. It looked like it was at least going to be competitive. But I thought that Intel were going to be a lot more aggressive when it came to countering it. I thought, okay, well, obviously, they're probably going to have a lot of pressure on them. They're going to, you know, really reduce the price of their chips. They're going to do X, Y, and Z. And to be honest, they just haven't done maybe as much as what I'd expect it. In fact, they've made some rather boneheaded moves. I don't want to recount too much the X299 thing because I think I've droned on about that enough for now anyway until we get more information on it. But the big area is the mainstream processors. So here's where it starts to get a bit confusing. The early reports were that the Z270 chip, oh, sorry, just to rephrase, the Z270 boards would be able to run um, Coffee Lake. In other words, it should, in theory, be compatible with a 6 core processor. That doesn't look like it's the case any longer. But Intel are planning to launch a new platform. Well, I'm just going to give you a few seconds. You can angrily write some comments on Intel and a new platform in the, as normal. But um, basically, Intel are planning to launch this platform between August and September. In other words, just before the Q4 sun starts to rise. The primary difference here is it's going to be a six core part and it's going to be based on the eighth generation Coffee Lake Silicon. Now, it will be based upon a refined 14 nm process, which is kind of ironic considering we just talked about a 5 nm, but whatever. And it looks like, according to this roadmap that's leaked online, and I'm sure Intel are not too happy about that, it looks like it's going to be hitting around the 95 watt mark and it will have an unlocked multiplier. Don't, don't worry though, remember you're not supposed to overclock those. Now, it looks like quad core, core parts will be coming out as well, and they are going to be rated down to just 65 watts, assuming that they are not um, multiplier unlocked. It's kind of weird, to be quite frank with you, how this is all going to work in terms of timing, and uh, I guess it does also depend on availability and all that stuff. And it looks like we're going to get more Coffee Lake CPUs. And this is the early rumours. This was what I actually reported yesterday. And I guess this is where the, the confusion set in. Because several websites were actually saying, no, what was going to happen is that we we're going to get uh, Coffee Lake being delayed until next year. And that doesn't look like the case. Instead, we're going to get a very staggered launch, which seems to be Intel's modus operandi at the moment. And basically, we're going to get the high end, essentially in the third quarter, and then we're going to get Gemini Lake, which is obviously, you know, not has, not really going to be that much use for us gamers, and then that's going to hit the fourth quarter, and then in the um, first quarter of 2018, we're going to get the rest of the chipsets. So in other words, we're going to get the lower end chipsets, and we're also going to get the remainder of the CPUs on offer. So it's almost like what AMD did with Ryzen. If you recall, Ryzen 7 hit first and you know it was kind of very easy to get hold of the chips the boards were an absolute bastard but that's beside the point um and ironically enough very different the chips were easy to get on the high end but the b350s were the easier motherboards and in intel it's the complete reverse the high-end chips and the high-end motherboards are going to be on sale first so you know whatever 
What I do find rather amusing about this slide, might I add, is that you actually see, once again, the clarification that we're going to see a delay in the launch of some of the Skylake X processors, because they're only listing the 12, 10, 8, 6, and 4 cores, um, essentially for now, and that's on the X299 platform, so it's just a bit bizarre, really. I, I still feel Intel's plans are very weird. Like, I... I, I, I honestly do not understand why they're releasing a 4-core on the um, X299. I know I'm probably being sound like a broken record, but I just don't understand it. I, I kind of understood for a minute when I heard that they might be delaying Coffee Lake until next year. I thought, okay, that kind of makes sense. But it's even more weird now because it's like, okay, so on the mainstream you can get a 6-core processor. What's going to be the pricing of that? Are they going to make it really expensive? I'm really hoping that's not going to be really expensive. I'm really hoping that they're going to be quite sensible with the pricing. It's not going to be much more than, let's say, the 1700X is. Now, obviously, there is the clock speed equa uh, question, because obviously I don't know the clock speeds, but let's just say the chips hit 4.5 to whatever gigahertz stock. Well, obviously, that is an advantage over Ryzen, and if you do get six cores at 12 threads, presumably, running... At 4.5 gigahertz, that's an awful lot of performance, but I don't think many people are really going to want to pay more money than a 1700X or even a 1700. Do remember the 1700 does overclock pretty well, despite the fact that it it is technically not as uh, overclocker built, overclock friendly built rather as like the 1700X or the 1800X. So it's it's just a bit bizarre. Anyway, um. You know what? I'm not going to criticise it. I'm just going to say that I, I really want to stand it. I'm going to test out the products. Uh, we should be getting X299 board. And I really am looking forward to it because I feel the platform as an actual platform itself is really good. I feel that it has a lot of potential. And that's the really weird thing. Like, if you actually look at Intel's product line, if you actually cut through the weirdness, their actual products and what they're actually producing is really cool. It's just how they're marketing it and some of the decisions and the marketing are just weird. They should have just taken the hit. So do you know what? AMD have the win for now on the terms of the cause or whatever, um, you know, or this platform and then just segmented it. I think that would have just cut through a lot of the negative press. And I, I don't feel that Intel are losing out on the performance. I feel the performance is going to be really good. I think the boards are going to be pretty stable. There might be some weirdness in certain configurations because there probably will be. But I feel some of that is just plumbed down to the the just the bizarre nature of how they're putting everything together. Anyway, um, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.